Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Risch. And as we move forward, we're going to be going through the entire New Testament. Uh, and with that, we're going to do a commentary afterwards. And uh, with that said, let us just move on to our next section. And thank you for joining me. Chapter 20 For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house, who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour, and the ninth hour he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Say that these two sons of mine are to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And as they went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. And behold, there were two blind men sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd rebuked them, telling them to be silent. But they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And stopping, Jesus called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus in pity touched their eyes, and immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. Matthew chapter 20 
I, concerning rewards for labor in the vineyard, 20 colon 1 of 16. 20 colon 1, 2 This parable, a continuation of the discourse on rewards at the end of chapter 19, illustrates the truth that while all true disciples will be rewarded, the order of rewards will be determined by the spirit in which the disciple served. The parable describes a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers to work in his vineyard. These men contracted to work for a denarius a day, a reasonable wage at that time. Let us say they began to work at 6 a.m. 20 colon 3, for at 9 a.m. the farmer found some other unemployed laborers in the marketplace. In this case, there was no labor management agreement. They went to work with only his word that he would give them whatever was right. 20 colon 5, 7 at noon and at 3 p.m. the farmer hired more men on the basis that he would give them a fair wage. At 5 p.m. he found more unemployed men. They were not lazy, they wanted work but hadn't been able to find it. So he sent them into the vineyard without any discussion of pay. It is important to notice that the first men were hired as a result of a bargaining agreement, all the others left the matter of pay to the landowner. 20 colon 8 At the end of the day, the farmer instructed his paymaster to pay the men, beginning with the last hired and working back to the first. In this way the earliest men hired saw what the others received. 20 colon 9, 12 It was the same pay for all, 1 denarius. The 6 a.m. men thought they would receive more, but note they too got 1 denarius. They were bitterly resentful, after all, they had worked longer and through the heat of the day. 20 13, 14 In the farmer's reply to one of them we find the abiding lessons from the parable. First he said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours, and go your way. I wish to give to this last man, the same as to you. The first bargained for a denarius a day and got the wage agreed on. The others cast themselves on the farmer's grace and got grace. Grace is better than justice. It is better to leave our rewards up to the Lord than to strike a bargain with him. 2015 Then the farmer said, Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? The lesson, of course, is that God is sovereign. He can do as He pleases. And what He pleases will always be right, just, and fair. The farmer added, Or is your eye evil because I am good? This question exposes the selfish streak in human nature. The 6 a.m. men got exactly what they deserved, yet were jealous because the others got the same pay for working fewer hours. Many of us have to admit that it seems a bit unfair to us, too. This only proves that in the kingdom of heaven we must adopt an entirely new kind of thinking. We must abandon our greedy, competitive spirit and think like the Lord. The farmer knew that all these men needed money, so he paid them according to need rather than greed. No one received less than he deserved, but all received what they needed for themselves and their families. The lesson, according to James Stewart, is that the person who thinks to bargain about final reward will always be wrong and God's loving kindness will always have the last unchallengeable word. The more we study the parable in this light, the more we realize that it is not only fair but eminently beautiful. Those who were hired at 6 a.m. should have counted it an added recompense to serve such a wonderful master all day. 2016 Jesus closed the parable with the words, So the last will be first, and the first last, see 1930. There will be surprises in the matter of rewards. Some who thought they would be first will be last because their service was inspired by pride and selfish ambition. Others who served out of love and gratitude will be highly honored. Deeds of merit as we thought them. He will show us were but sin. Little acts we had forgotten. He will show us were for him. Anon. J. Concerning his death and resurrection, 20:17:19. It is apparent that the Lord was leaving Perea for the trip to Jerusalem via Jericho, see verse 29. Once again he took the twelve disciples aside to explain what would happen after they reached the holy city. He would be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes an obvious reference to the perfidy of Judas. He would be condemned to death by the leaders of Jewry. Lacking authority to inflict capital punishment, they would turn him over to the Gentiles, the Romans. He would be mocked, scourged, and crucified. 
but death would not keep its prey, he would rise again on the third day. K. Concerning position in the kingdom, 20 colon 20 of 28. It is a sad commentary on human nature that, immediately after the third prediction of his passion, his followers were thinking more of their own glory than of his sufferings. Christ's first prediction of suffering gave rise to Peter's demur, 1622, the second was soon followed by the disciples' questions, who is the greatest? So here, we find the third capped with the ambitious request of James and John. They persistently closed their eyes to warnings of trouble and opened them only to the promise of glory so getting a wrong, materialistic view of the kingdom, daily notes of the scripture union. 2020, 21 The mother of James and John came to the Lord asking that her boys might sit on either side of him in his kingdom. It is to her credit that she wanted her sons near Jesus and that she had not despaired of his coming reign. But she did not understand the principles upon which honors would be bestowed in the kingdom. Mark says that the sons made the request themselves, Mark 10 verse 35, perhaps they did it at her direction, or perhaps the three of them approached the Lord together. No contradiction is involved. 2022 Jesus answered frankly that they did not understand what they were asking. They wanted a crown without a cross, a throne without the altar of sacrifice, the glory without the suffering that leads to it. So he asked them pointedly, are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? We are not left to wonder what he meant by the cup, he had just described it in verses 18 and 19. He must suffer and die. James and John expressed ability to share in his sufferings, though perhaps their confidence was based more on zeal than knowledge. 2023 Jesus assured them that they would indeed drink of his cup. James would be martyred and John persecuted and exiled to the Isle of Patmos. Robert Little said, James died a martyr's death. John lived a martyr's life. Then Jesus explained that he could not arbitrarily grant places of honor in the kingdom, the Father had determined a special basis on which these positions would be assigned. They thought it was a matter of political patronage, that because they were so close to Christ, they had a special claim to places of preferment. But it was not a question of personal favoritism. In the counsels of God, the places on his right hand and left hand would be given on the basis of suffering for him. This means that the chief honors in the kingdom are not limited to first-century Christians, some living today might win them by suffering. 2020 for the other ten disciples were greatly displeased that the sons of Zebedee had made such a request. They were probably indignant because they themselves wanted to be greatest and resented any prior claims being made by James and John. 20 colon 25 and 27 This gave our Lord the opportunity to make a revolutionary statement concerning greatness in His kingdom. The Gentiles think of greatness in terms of mastery and rule. In Christ's kingdom, greatness is manifested by service. Whoever aspires to greatness must become a servant, and whoever desires to be first must become a slave. 2028 20, The Son of Man is the perfect example of lowly service. He came into the world not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The whole purpose of the Incarnation can be summed up in two words, serve and give. It is amazing to think that the exalted Lord humbled himself to the manger and to the cross. His greatness was manifested in the depth of his humiliation. And so it must be for us. He gave his life a ransom for many. His death satisfied all God's righteous demands against sin. It was sufficient to put away all the sins of all the world. But it is effective only for those who accept Him as Lord and Savior. Have you ever done this? L. Healing of Two Blind Men, 20,29, 20, 34. 20,29, 20, 30 By now Jesus had crossed the Jordan from Perea and had reached Jericho. As He was leaving the city, two blind men cried out to Him, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. Their use of the title Son of David means that, though physically blind, their spiritual vision was so acute as to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. They may represent the believing remnant of blinded Israel who will acknowledge him as the Christ when he returns to reign, Isaiah 35 verse 5 of 42 verse 7 Romans 11 verses 25 and 26, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 16, Revelation 1 verse 7. 20 to 31 to 30 for the crowd tried to hush them, but they cried after him more insistently. When Jesus asked what they wanted, they didn't indulge in generalities, as we often do when we pray. 
they came right to the point, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Their specific request received a specific response. Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. And immediately they received their sight, and they followed him. With regard to his touching them, Gabeline makes a helpful observation. We have learned before the typical meaning of healing by touch in this gospel. Whenever the Lord heals by touch it has reference, dispensationally, to his personal presence on the earth and his merciful dealing with Israel. When he heals by his word, absent in person, or if he is touched in faith, it refers to the time when he is absent from the earth, and Gentiles approaching him in faith are healed by him. Point 40. There are difficulties in reconciling Matthew's account of this incident with Mark 10 verses 46-52 and Luke 18 verses 35-43, 19-1. Here are two blind men, in Mark and Luke, only one is mentioned. It has been suggested that Mark and Luke mention the well-known one, Bartimaeus, and Matthew, writing his gospel especially for Jews, mentions two as the minimum number for a valid testimony, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1. In Matthew and Mark, the incident is said to have occurred as Jesus left Jericho, in Luke, it is said to have happened as he drew near the city. In fact there were two Jerichos, an old Jericho and a new one, and the miracle of healing probably took place as Jesus was leaving one and entering the other. Well, this ends another one of our podcasts, and until next time, just remember, God is out here, and you can find out all about him in your Bibles. All you have to do is pick it up and read it. I have mine right here, and uh, God is in this Bible, so please read it. With that said, bye for now. Till next time.